Hello friends, it's me, and today we're checking out Film Theory, the Batman's Fatal Flaw, from the Film Theorists. Together, let's go! Oh sorry, it should be the Batman's Fatal Flaw. <laughs> I'm sorry. February 18th, 2023. I finally I am These creatives Batman. with their comic books making movies have zero respect for the science of style. No matter Captain how realistic America. they want their movies to be, they don't consider the realistic consequences of the actions of their antics. And now, I have proof. Proof that Batman should be dead. And the reasoning is explosive. <sighs> Hello, Internet. Welcome to Film Theory. Hello Internet, welcome to Film Theory! Hi! Let's go! Mm. The show that knows that theorists are not a superstitious and cowardly lot. You wanna know how I know that, friends? Just look at the wide array of content that we've covered over the years. We've exposed Mario's truly psychopathic nature, played Rocket League in real life with real cars, we've predicted the future mm -hmm. of superhero franchises and analyzed how to survive every single horror movie imaginable. We've cried while eating spicy foods, and we've worked out the best ways to get the most bang for your bucket buffets. And now, today, my friends, we're ready for the next step in our theorizing adventure. Today yes, is a yes, huge, yes. momentous day, loyal theorists. Today, we are launching the first new theorist channel since 2020. The fourth little quadrant of our logo is finally getting filled, completing that little Simon Says ring of YouTube and bringing us one step closer to theorist world domination. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to Style Theory. Yep, style Theory! Channel that's dedicated to style, fashion, beauty, and hygiene right now, with five brand new theories over there for you to go and watch right now after you mm. finish this one. Now, I know what you're thinking. Style? How are you going to theorize about style? Exactly the same way that we theorize about film, games, and food. Because everything and anything that you're passionate about are things that you can theorize about. The same research, science, history, and lore analysis that we use to discuss and decode analog horror, superheroes, and anime 100% mm -hmm. apply to the very real world of clothes, makeup, hair, and hygiene. Did you know that your old makeup might be killing you? Have you ever wondered about school uniforms and whether they do anything good for the students. You know Hulk's purple pants? What do you think those might be made out of? And speaking of fictional clothing, have you ever wondered just how effective skimpy armor from fantasy movies and video games would actually be? And lastly, since we're talking about movies, what about Cinderella's glass slipper? Can you make clothing out of glass? Or like on the new Netflix show Wednesday, she says she's allergic to color. Can you actually be allergic to color in your clothing? All of that and more is going to be coming your way over on this new channel, so go check it out after you finish this episode. Right now, <laughs> subscribing to Style Theory is the single best way that you can help both us and yourself out. Not only are you going to be getting yourself some super interesting educational videos about all sorts of fun topics that are all very real and applicable to your everyday life, but if we mm -hmm. can manage to get a million subscribers by the end of the month, that'll put Style Theory as one of the top fashion channels on YouTube. So, Nathan, you got a million subscribers to the Style Theorist within a couple of days, so yay, yay. <laughs> Help us, help yourself, and let's dominate a whole new portion of YouTube, my friends. The link to Style Theory and its five brand new theories that just dropped today. You heard that right, five new videos that are brand new right now. All of that mm -hmm. is in the top line of the description and the iCard in the top right-hand corner of the screen. So go, Thank click you. on that over there, but make sure that you're opening it in a new window, because here, we've still got to talk about one of the most iconic pieces of clothing in all of pop culture, the bat suit. Loyal mm -mm -mm. The bat suit. Batman. Theorists, there have been a lot of bat suits on film over the years. We've had spandex mm -hmm. suits, rubber masks, military grade spelunking gear, comic accurate capes and cowls, and even bat nipples for some reason. <laughs> but I think my favorite incarnation of the suit so far has to be the realistic version that we see in director Matt Reeves' The Batman. See, mm. this suit looks like the stuff that this Bruce Wayne could have realistically found and cobbled together himself. And it really followed the vibe that was set by the rest of this version of the Caped Crusader. The Batman follows the tried and tested formula of bat films that we've seen over the years. Bruce Wayne's parents are killed in front of him, turning him into an edgelord cosplayer who takes out his frustrations on the superstitious, cowardly lot that is the criminal underworld of Gotham City. Mm. 
But this go around, things yeah. are a lot more grounded. While Christopher Nolan's Batman was a suave globetrotter with unlimited resources, and Zack Snyder's <laughs> Batman was a murderous psychopath with an exoskeleton mech, on the surface level, this Batman seems a lot more realistic. He wears combat boots that he probably picked up from the local army surplus store. He drives a muscle car Batmobile that he clearly modified himself. He listens to Nirvana while journaling about his feelings. The film even embraces the idea of cycles of violence, with Batman being the inspiration for a lot of the lunatics that he's trying to stop, which sometimes gets just a wee bit too real. Matt Reeves and the other filmmakers involved in the Batman clearly put a lot of time, effort, and energy into making this the most practical, realistic, and down-to-earth iteration of the character that we've ever seen on film. Which is why it's so weird for me that the Battinson shrugs off bullets with such alarming regularity. At one point, he even takes a shotgun blast point-blank to the chest before smooching Catwoman, dusting himself off, and beating the poop out of the guy who shot him. Seriously, for as grounded as this take on the hero might seem on the outside, the Batman has bullets bouncing off of the Batsuit more than Superman's chest. That just didn't sit right with me. Are billionaires suddenly reality benders now? What are your superpowers again? I'm rich. Well, not exactly. You see, loyal theorists, even if Batman had the best body armor in the world, his ability of affluence wouldn't have let him limp away from the events of this movie. And not for the reasons that you might think. I don't even have to go into that ridiculous scene where he face plants into a bridge going like 45 miles an hour either. Nope, the reason that Batman would be dead is a lot softer than that. So put on your super suits and stand broodingly in the rain there, loyal theorists. Let's dive in. So let's just start off by looking at how exactly bulletproof armor works. See, bullets are deadly because they concentrate an enormous amount of force onto a small surface area, allowing bullets to tear through almost anything that they hit. Bulletproof armor works by taking the force of that bullet and then spreading it out over a larger surface area, preventing it from penetrating your body and wreaking havoc on your internal organs. Don't get me wrong, it's still gonna hurt, leaving you winded and bruised, but it makes it substantially more likely that you'll be able to survive getting shot. We've actually touched on this subject before in my game theory discussing whether or not you should bring a knife to a gunfight, and we found that bulletproof isn't exactly the right phrase. Bullet resistant is more accurate. In pop culture, the most commonly cited type of this sort of bullet resistant armor is known as Kevlar, which mm -hmm. actually isn't what you probably expect it to be when you hear the word armor. The stuff isn't some sort of metal or anything like that. It's actually a bunch of synthetic fibers interwoven together, which makes it really good at dispersing the force of bullets as they strike the Kevlar. Yep, yeah, you heard that right. Kevlar is technically a fabric. Fun fact, Kevlar was originally developed by the DuPont Company, who were also the minds behind another superhero staple, Spanish. Spandex. We actually talk about exactly that and a whole lot more in our episode about Hulk's pants, the new episode over on Style Theory. Mm, style Theory! So you should go check it out. Just another shameless plug. Anyway, most of the guns that are used by Falcone's goons and the Riddler's henchmen were either pistols or submachine guns that fire 9mm rounds, which Kevlar would do a pretty good job at stopping. But here's the thing, that's talking about firing from a distance. When fired at point-blank range like we see quite a bit during the Batman, Kevlar doesn't do the best job of stopping the bullet. Depending on where they hit the armor, some bullets would have a good chance at breaking through and entering the body. And that's not even mentioning that some of the bad guys use bigger guns with more powerful bullets, especially during mm -hmm. the finale fight above Gotham Square Garden. Here, we can clearly see Batman getting hit with bullets fired by M16 and Winchester rifles, which both shoot 5.56 NATO rounds. And remember, Kevlar isn't bulletproof, just bullet resistant. And 5.56 rounds fired by those rifles would absolutely be able to break through it, no problem. Thankfully for Batman, though, Kevlar isn't the strongest type of body armor out there. It's actually considered a soft body armor, which you can clearly see here in this video by Tal Feldermouse. Notice how it basically folds around the bullets to stop them? It almost looks like it's catching the bullets, right? Given the fact that we don't see anything like this happen when Batman gets shot in the film, instead the bullets just bounce off of him with sparks, clearly he's wearing some sort of hard body armor. According to the National Institute of Justice, there are five different categories of body armor used in modern times. These include level 2A, level 2, uh -huh. level 3A, level 3 and level 4. Doesn't Why did it jump straight to level 2A? What happened to level 1? What happened? In case you're wondering, level 1 body armor does exist, but it's no longer mm -hmm. considered acceptable by the NIJ. Why? Also, those A classifications just get shoved between existing classes when an armor doesn't quite fit into one of the categories. The 2A through 3A levels are all soft armors, with Kevlar ranking somewhere right in the middle there. It means that Kevlar is actually on the weaker side of modern body armor, believe it or not. That might come Ooh. as a surprise to you if you've ever heard that Kevlar is stronger than steel. And yeah, I mean, that's still true. That just doesn't paint you a complete picture. Kevlar is indeed up to five times stronger than steel if you compare their strength to weight ratio. Basically, steel armor that weighs
stays the same as a Kevlar vest won't be offering that much protection. But that doesn't mean that steel can't stop bullets if you're willing to wear a full suit of armor out into the field. The YouTube channel Demolition Ranch actually did a test to show just how effective steel armor can be at stopping bullets. Stop there. That was a good one. But steel isn't even the best option for plate armor nowadays. We are long past the Middle Ages after all, and Batman has himself the entire R&D department of Wayne Enterprises at his fingertips. The yep. yep, he's a billionaire. Um, so sorry, sorry, sorry. He's a multi-billionaire, so yeah, very rich. These days, the highest NIJ rated armor consists of several solid plates, usually made from some sort of ceramic composite, something that is literally harder than the bullets that are being fired at it. According to the NIJ, the strongest level 4 armor is able to withstand armor piercing rounds, quote, obtained from US military M2 AP ammunition. If none of that means anything to you, which why would it, we are talking about some seriously heavy firepower. This stuff is like, I came here for Batman and Matt Pat is teaching me about ammunition. Why? <laughs> can penetrate three quarter inches of steel with no issue. Those ceramic oh. plates are going to be able to stop the weaker 9mm and 5.56 ammo shot by most of Riddler's and Falcone's goons, no problem. Honestly, these plates aren't even that expensive by Batman standards. I was able to find commercially available military grade 9.5 inch by 12.5 inch level 4 armor plating for just around $600 per plate. And given Bruce Wayne's resources, it's even feasible that the parts of the Batsuit that needed to be flexible and aren't armor plated could be made from Kevlar, so this super suit of armor might actually be legit. It would also probably be able to stop that point-blank shotgun oh. blast that briefly winded Batman during the finale fight. YouTuber Paul Harrell tested common shotgun pellet projectiles against level 3A soft body armor, which is weaker than the ceramic plates, and things went really well despite multiple direct hits. Now remember, this vest has already been shot with nine pellets, so it was compromised before we ever taped it to this log, oh. but it got hit with the second nine pellets, and stopped every one of them. Even when testing much wow. heavier slug projectiles, the heavily compromised level 3A vest was able to stop the bullet, even though a great deal of concussive force was able to get through. That force would have been lessened had this been level 4 armor like Batman's wearing, probably saving his life even if he got knocked to his butt, which perfectly lines up with what we see in the movie. Batman gets hit by the shotgun, and though the armor stops the projectile, he flies mm -hmm. backwards from the concussive force. So is that it? The Batman's armor is legit? Does all of this prove that Bruce Wayne could have put on this bat suit and had all those cool fight scenes in dark hallways and come out on the other end with only a few bruises to show for it all? Well, it's more than legit to be honest with you. A case and points, technology is always improving. Right now it's in the year 2023. 10 years ago, in the year 2013, the, the armor, okay, the technology for bulletproof, oh, sorry, bullet resistance armor is not that it's not that widespread to be honest. And not to be, not, not to forget that Bruce Wayne is a multi-billionaire. He might have hands on the next level, next gen technology. He's like, sure, why not? He's a multi-billionaire, maybe. Not exactly, loyal theorists, because bullets Why? bouncing off his armor isn't the only life-threatening situation that Bruce Wayne finds himself in in The Batman. During one of the most tense scenes in the film, the Riddler straps an explosive collar onto the district attorney's neck in an attempt to get him to confess who's at the root of the government's corruption. Batman, both trying to save the DA's life and get himself the same information, stands real close so he can do the whole gravelly whisper shtick instead of just talking like a normal person. Of course, because we're only about halfway through the movie at this point and we can't solve the mystery yet, the DA refuses to give a name and the bomb goes off, throwing Batman across the room and knocking him unconscious. Yeah, nah, this absolutely stretches the edge of believability in a lot of ways. But the most obvious one, given that we just deduced that the Batsuit is level 4 plated armor, this scene and the explosion would have 100% killed Batman. See, explosive ordnance disposal suits, or just bomb suits for short, are very complicated pieces of clothing. Up until the <clears throat> mid-1990s, they were actually made of Kevlar with armor plating, all in an effort to stop shrapnel from killing the bomb technicians. But that mm -hmm. type of armor didn't provide protection against the blast waves. In the unfortunate situation where an explosive actually went off, they produced shock waves that ripped through the bodies of the people that were trying to defuse them. So even if there was no injury from shrapnel, the lungs and other internal organs of the person would be wounded. Oftentimes, these wounds 
were fatal. This was actually such a huge deal at the time and happened so frequently that these sorts of injuries earned themselves the nickname Blast Lung. Researchers found that oh. the Kevlar and armor plating by themselves just couldn't offer enough protection. But when they were layered with both a high and low density acoustic foam, suddenly the people mm -hmm. in the suits were far more likely to survive the blast waves. So because of this, modern bomb suits are made not only from Kevlar and ballistic plating like we see with Batman's suit, but also several layers of both high and low density protective foam. That's oh, as for mentioned, the technology have always been improving in comparison to previous decades. Not to mention that Batman is a multi-billionaire. He might have hands on the next gen technology. So yeah, Matt Pat, maybe it's possible that Batman can survive? Maybe? Maybe. That's partially what gives the bomb suit that iconic bulky look, which the Batman lacks with its thinner, sleeker silhouette. And all of this is without even mentioning the bomb suit helmets, which have themselves mm. giant thick visors made from fully <clears throat> laminated acrylic and polycarbonate to protect from shrapnel entering the face. In short, there's just no way that the bat suit in the movie has the protective layering required to survive a point blank explosion, especially <sighs> when Battinson's lower face is completely uncovered. In fact, now that I'm thinking about it, even with this super strong, basically bulletproof suit of armor, you would think that Bruce Wayne would be smart enough to cover his entire face if he's expecting to be shot at all the time. Between that and approaching an active armed bomb without any sort of bomb suit, yeah, I'd say that this Bruce Wayne has himself an active death wish. Forget the Batman, Robert Pattinson is more accurately described as the dead man. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And you know what other superhero has himself an unrealistic costume that stretches the bounds of reality? The Incredible Hulk and his purple pants. If you want to know why exactly these things stay on the Hulk while all his shirts rip off his body, or why this uh -huh. single pair of pants probably costs more than a luxury Lamborghini, you should probably go check out the brand new channel, Style Theory. Link is on screen right now. And that's not all, loyal theorists. In addition to that Hulk episode, there are four other new episodes over there today. That is five entirely new theories covering everything from how your makeup might be poisoning you, the conspiracy behind women's pockets, whether math can make someone's face more beautiful, and whether or not you can literally kill someone with with your clothes. Protect the waifu! Mm, that bad. Waifu! Uh. <laughs> Please go on over there and subscribe to Style Theory so we can hit a million subscribers by the end of the month. It's absolutely Subscribe! Awesome. Help would be wonderful and much appreciated to all of us over here who've been working really hard on this channel. And if we can manage to hit a million Thank subscribers you. by the end of the month, oh, that would be amazing. Thank you so much for supporting the theorist efforts over the years. And thank you for letting us get to this next major milestone in our journey. I love you guys. And I'll see you on this channel mm. next week. And cut. Bro, where is the end cut part? You stop at the end. Style theory? Seriously? <laughs> What is the comment section saying about this video? Um, considering that, considering this uh, Batman survived a point, point blank explosion and Kristen Bale's Batman survived a skyscraper fall by landing on a car, I think I'm thinking Batman might be lying about the whole no superpower things, uh, su no superpowers thing. Huh? True. Makes 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 a good point. Makes a good point. Okay. Makes a good point. Uh, incredibly genius of Batman's to spend his early years building a suit of bat cloth armor <laughs> to wear such a unique backstory edit this is a joke guys calm it like, calm TF down mm, I understand <laughs> I'm honestly surprised Batman isn't deaf oh I'm honestly surprised Batman isn't deaf from all the gunshots he's been around that makes a very good point this got me thinking noise mufflers maybe I'm surprised he can even sleep in Gotham uh, it's worse than- Oh! Wow! Wow! That makes a very good point. All the sound, dong dong dong, is gonna affect him mentally. How can he sleep? Well, anyways, I hope you find this video quite interesting to watch. Please remember to subscribe to my channel, and I hope to see you on the next video. Thank you so much. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And come! And I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye bye! Boom! Thank you so much.